Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. Today I wanted to come out and share with you a dream I was given last night, and I believe it is a warning dream. And uh, it was a short dream, but I believe it has a powerful message. So in this dream, I was with my husband and we were on a street called High Street. It's a, it's a street in my childhood neighborhood. Now, Alan was like in the backyard of this one home and I was out on the street and he began to yell for me to come over to where he was. And he told me he was given a revelation concerning the rapture. So when I went over to Alan, where Alan was, he was laying on the ground and he started to point out to me like just the, uh, the earth and, and the rolls in it and the curves in it. And then he started to point out above the earth, the, the road, all right, that followed that same pattern, all right, with the curves and the rolls, and uh, and that was it. And so when I woke up, I wasn't sure what the dream meant, so I reached out to my friend Rhonda Empson, and she started to give me her thoughts on it, and as she shared her thoughts, it was like Holy Spirit began to uh, bring these scriptures to mind that I believe really uh, reveal the meaning of this dream, of this morning. All right, so first of all, the Apostle Paul warns us in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, he says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. All right, so we know that this world follows a pattern, just like Alan was pointing out in the, in the ground. And there is a road, all right? There is a road that follows the pattern of this world. And Jesus talks about that road in uh, Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 14. And he says, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through it. All right, so that wide gate, that road that follows the pattern of this world, Jesus said that it ends in destruction. It leads to destruction. So this is the warning uh, that I believe the Lord is giving through this dream. And Jesus actually warns uh, that those who allow themselves, you know, to be weighed down with sin and, and, and things like that, the pattern of this world, uh, that they're going to be caught in a trap. All right, Luke 21, 34 through 35, Jesus said, be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day, now that day meaning the day that the wrath of God is poured out, that time of Jacob's trouble, the seven years that Daniel prophesied about, uh, will close in on you suddenly like a trap. I mean, they won't be expecting it. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Okay, so that day, that wrath of God is coming, and it's going to impact every square inch of this earth, everybody who lives in this world. And the warning is that those who are on that path, okay, that path that follows the pattern of this world, that road, that they're going to be caught off guard. They're not going to be expecting it. Now, I was reading in Psalm 10, today as a part of my regular reading. And I was kind of blown away when I got to verse five, because this scripture is about the wicked, the greedy, those who are always saying in their heart, there is no God. And this is what it says about them in verse five. It says, meaning, you know, the wicked, his ways prosper at all times. Your judgments are on high out of his sight. Your judgments are on high, out of his sight. And remember, Alan and I were on High Street, okay? And he's showing us, you know, that those who are following the pattern of this world are on that road, all right? And that road is going to lead to destruction. So those people that are on that road are not seeing the judgments. It's, it's out of their sight. They're not going to be expecting it. And Jesus actually talked about this in Luke 17 when he, he talked about how people would be eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. Everything would seem relatively normal, all right? Um, and this is what it was like in the days of Noah. And then the flood came and took them all away. And the Bible says that they knew nothing about it. In Luke 17, 26, just as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. You know, people will be eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. It's going to seem just like ordinary life, relatively normal life, okay? And 
So even though we know the people in Noah's day were being warned and we know people are being warned today, they're not hearing it. They're not taking it to heart. And because of that, they're going to be caught off guard. All right. They're going to be caught off guard and they're not going to be expecting it. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't be warning because what I believe is the seeds that we're planting right now, even though the people may not be listening, I believe those seeds, you know, after the church is removed and the time of Jacob's trouble begins, and I believe that is the trap Jesus was referring to, that time of Jacob's trouble, the seven years of the wrath of God being poured out on the earth, you know, that when that begins, all right, um, it's that is going to be, all right, the culmination of all of it, of, you know, all of the the warnings, all of the 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 you know, every, everything we have shared will come up in their hearts, will come up in their minds, and they'll remember. They'll remember that we warned them. And so it's important for us to not stop warning. It's important for us to continue sharing these truths because that, that seed you plant today may not come to fruition until the time of Jacob's trouble. And, and they then remember what you said, what you warned about, and they'll see that it came to pass. And that's when people, I believe, many people will get saved. So don't stop sharing. And also, um, Michael Stefani, he was given a dream vision uh, concerning America. I'm going to leave a link in the description box. Uh, it's very sobering, very sobering. You know, he was actually basically shown where war was coming to America. He asked when. He was told in May. He wasn't given a year. Uh, and, you know, he was basically shown that the person, he said it, it would last for three weeks. He was told it would last for three weeks, and the person who brokers the deal would be the Antichrist. So, you know, I, I believe Scripture is very clear that the church is going to have to be removed before Antichrist comes on the scene. So I really believe we are much closer to that time uh, of Jacob's trouble beginning and the church being removed than many people think. All right. And, you know, the fig tree generation prophecy, 1948, Israel came into her land. You know, and Jesus said this generation, meaning the one that comes into to her land when Israel's re restored, will not pass away before all these things happen. All of the end time prophecies. So if you go to Psalm 90 and, you, you know, the generation there would be 80 years max, then that would mean 2028 would be the end. That would be 80 years for Israel. So you go back seven years, and it takes us to May 14th, 2021, uh, is when, basically, if that's the timeline, um, Jacob's trouble would have to begin then. You know, and based on my understanding of Scripture, the rapture will be pre-tribulation. I believe it's bedrocked in Scripture. So the church will have to be removed. So if, if these things are lining up, if we're understanding correctly, we don't have a lot of time. We don't have a lot of time. So please continue warning. Please continue sharing with your loved ones, your family members, friends, anybody who will listen. And even though they may not respond now, okay, I believe the time will come when they will remember what you shared with them. And that may be the difference for life, between life and death for them, spiritually speaking. So anyway, I hope this message encourages you. I hope it blesses you, church. And as always, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.